originally wrote a script criticizing Disney for constantly remaking classic films just to turn a profit. Yet, as I found more and more comments, reviews, and posts about this new Lion King remake, I realized that everyone else was saying basically the same thing that I was. When I created this channel, I strived to make videos unlike anyone else. I'd review films like The Spectacular Now that most people wouldn't have even heard of, let alone review. And if I did review a big budget film like Aquaman, I'd try to do something different, have a different perspective on the film that would make it stand out amongst the sea of reviews, pun intended. So when I finished that Lion King script, I started over, because I wanted a better product. Sure, the other video probably would have gotten the same amount of views, but this video is something that'll be unique. See what I'm getting at? Huh? I hate Disney's live action remakes and I haven't even seen a single one. I know they're animated, but come on, there's no animation there. I've seen YouTube clips on them and it's just sad to look at. There's no expression, they're pretty much shot for shot. Ah, uh, it's soulless, it's a cash grab, etc. You already know why they're bad. Every other YouTuber has made videos on it way better than I ever could, and there's a Reddit thread at least once a day on it. Yet these films still rake in billions of dollars. But on the other hand, The Lion King is my favorite animated Disney film, period. And how could it not be? The scale of the film is grand while keeping the characters front and center. Every frame pops with color and expression. Simba is an extremely relatable and understandable protagonist. Scar is brooding and one of the most effective Disney villains. Timon and Pumbaa have great comedic timing and chemistry while being their own characters relevant to the story, and the music, oh my god, the music is really good. I really like this movie. So when Disney announced a remake, of course I was a little bit skeptical. The footage that you're seeing here is actually leaked footage from the remake, and as you can see it all looks very photorealistic. But I was skeptical. I don't think that lion's necks actually stretch like that. Uh, and um, there's not a lot of facial expression, not a lot of animation really. Uh, Simba's there though. But still, based on their track record, I feel like I had reason to be nervous. The first trailer that came out didn't really win me over, but I really liked the second trailer. The music was there, Timon and Pumbaa were there, we got to see some dialogue, and it looked not too bad. So I was willing to give it a shot. So what did I think of the 2019 live action Lion King remake? It was bad. Not for the box office though, probably. So. Let's start with the positives, and when I start with the positives in their review, it's probably bad. Most of the singing voices were, in my opinion, better than the original. Both young and mature Simba in particular stood out, being played by both Childish Gambino and J.D. McCrary. I mean, what like, were you spending it on? Can I be honest? Yeah. <laughs> like gushers. The role of Zazu was perfect for John Oliver in general, and he was good, if not better overall than the original voice actor. Of course, you've got to mention the CGI too. A lot of modern CGI is downright uncanny, so I'm glad they figured out some way to do this right. Visually, seeing this in IMAX was beautiful. At some points, I could have sworn that it was actual live footage from a documentary. At other points, it's more obvious that it's a cartoon. But it makes me feel bad for the animators since all their work, which was beautiful, was used on something so bland. The best musical number by far, and probably honestly the only one that I really enjoyed, was The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Timon and Pumbaa were fine in this film. They riffed back and forth and added some originality in their personality, something that I personally liked. But The Lion Sleeps Tonight was extended from the original, which was probably 20 to 30 seconds long and features all of the neighboring animals, which were also new characters in the film. And this movie made me smile. A lot. This is 100% because of nostalgia, but from the first... <laughs> to the first... was absolute bliss for me. I probably looked like an idiot smiling so big in that theater. The same thing happened when I listened to all the songs on Spotify a week earlier. Hey, you know, this doesn't actually sound that bad. Wrong. There is no substance to this. It claims to introduce a new generation of this film, 
yet it paces itself in a way that you'll really only get the emotional gravity if you've seen the original. And if you have seen the original, this remake just feels like a lesser version of that. The story beats are just rushed over, bouncing from scene to scene like it's a recap. The pacing feels more like a middle school play than an actual Hollywood film. You've probably heard of the scene where Simba and Nala reunite, which lasts for approximately 20 seconds, going into Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which is set in the daytime, which is really the least of this movie's problems. Mufasa's death scene in this film is a crime. The delivery of Long Live the King is angry and not menacing. You don't even get to see Mufasa's reaction. Remember how in the original you could see the look of betrayal for just one second before he fell to his death? Here, there's nothing. Simba's no is actually kind of funny rather than sad, and there's such little emotion here that it makes me sick. Yet, there were people in the theater actually crying at this point. At the climax of the film when Simba fights Scar, you see a little flashback to this scene and you see the no again, but it's in slow motion. And way worse. It actually made me audibly laugh. There was one point when one of the hyenas, I think played by Keegan-Michael Key, said that Simba was looking like a snack. Both him and Eric Andre really didn't deliver with their performances. I love both of them as comedians, but in this role they just weren't great. I hate to admit that the animals are just as expressionless as you've heard. Have you ever been to like, you know, the zoo and looked at the lions before? As a kid you think that they're going to be these really big exciting things roaring all over the place, but you get there and they're all sleeping like all the time. Sometimes they'll lick their paws, sometimes they'll get up to stretch, but that's about it. Why did Disney think that using these real life lions would be more exciting than the animated version? Will there be animals out there for this? I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know, I hope so. I mean, it seems, I mean, it is Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is at one point where Sazu actually uses his eyes to emote, like, one time where his eyes go from fully open to half open, like he's smiling, but that's it. That tiny bit is the only part where an animal emoted in the two-hour runtime. There's one gag where, remember the hula drag scene in the original? What do you want me to do, dress and drag and do the hula? <laughs> they changed that to a stiff and lifeless Timon singing one line of Be Our Guest from Beauty and the Beast. It was admittedly kind of funny, and it sets up the live-action Disney remake cinematic universe, but it was so boring visually, whereas the original had colors and dancing all over the place. I know that this is the artist's vision, but come on, it's not that great of a vision. No scene, other than The Lion Sleeps Tonight, which I mentioned before, is visually more appealing than the original. You've got I Just Can't Wait to Be King, my favorite Disney song of all time, which is just Simba and Nala running around with some animals, no colors or anything, just running around. Nothing that I love from the original number. It's really just a shallow husk of what that number once was. All of the musical numbers are actually just animals walking and running around and moving their mouths. For every second that the nostalgia made me happy, there was another 10 minutes where I was just angry. It's like there's a small park in your hometown that you really grew up with as a kid. 20 years pass and the town decides that they're going to do some quote-unquote renovations for it. You come back to the park and you notice that a lot of the slides are shorter, uh, everything's a little bit safer, the trails are a little bit less pretty, the pond's a little bit filled in, stuff like that. Walking through it will make you say, oh yeah, there's the bench I used to sit on, or oh, that's where the pond was. But it's not quite the same. To a kid who doesn't know the, what the old park was like, it's a fine park, but to you, it's a disgrace. I'm not going to say that you shouldn't see this. If, after all I've said, you think you'll like it, give it a shot. If you can, see it in IMAX. If the idea of hearing in theaters excites you, then yeah, go give it a shot. If you want to hear oh, I just can't wait to be king. or if you want to hear be prepared then I'd probably skip it because that song's cut really short. But yeah, if you want to hear those songs performed by a National Geographic documentary with a recap of The Lion King somewhere in between, 
go ahead and watch the movie. But, if you want a worthy follow-up to The Lion King that respects the original story and animation style, while providing a very different tone, don't tell anyone I told you about this, but there's a movie called The Lion King 1 and a Half, a direct-to-DVD in-between quill to The Lion King. It released in 2004 and follows Timon and Pumbaa, two of my favorite film characters ever, as they exist within the events of The Lion King leading up to meeting Simba. The animation is the same quality as the original, and the voice actors reprise their roles. I loved it when I was little because it's funnier and more lighthearted than the original. Plus, Dig a Tunnel is a jam. I completely recommend this film. It's short and sweet. If you're hoping to enjoy yourself at the movies and not have a bitter taste in your mouth afterwards, watch something other than the 2009 Lion King remake. I always applauded the end of movies, but this time I just couldn't bring myself to do it. It just wasn't worth applauding. And that's a shame because the original is the most applaud-worthy film of the 90s. Disney, Mr. Favreau, you can do better. You have the money to take risks, so take some. If I said this movie was good, <laughs> I'd be lying. Get it? Because it's a movie about lions and it sounds like lying. It's a bad movie. Don't see it. <laughs>